Welcome, 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 y'all. Let me give y'all some time to jump in the room. Peace, honor, and accountability. It's your boy Q Vessel. I'm back, y'all. Welcome to 2020. We made it. Hey, that's a fact. Let me let everybody get up in the room. It's a new day. You know, we're going to do what we like to do today, today, today. We are doing the Cameron Purple Haze 2 album review. Get your ass up in this room. Let's get it, baby. <clears throat> if y'all have not heard the album, please, I'm going to give y'all some time to go to Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, anywhere you go to consume music, y'all need to download the album. I'm not even going to put my opinion on it yet. We're going to do an album review. Let's do it. Y'all know the number. I'm going to put the number in the chat. If you want to call up, talk to your boy Q Vessel, you can do that. That you can do. You can do that. <laughs> the number is 212-281-0370. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Call up right now. Uh, 0370-0370. The number's in the chat. That's the hotline number. Yo, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm trying to get my, I'm not trying. I'm getting my subscribers up this year. We're going to go well over 2,000. We're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers this year, um, which is pretty low, you know, but we're going to bring you more content, more album reviews, more reviews on different products. Shout out to the sponsor, Duke the God, gave the hoodie, the apparel to the album, Cameron Purple Haze 2 joint, fire, B. If y'all want to get the hoodie, get the merch from the Purple Haze 2 album, definitely reach out to Duke the God, you know what I mean? That's who's definitely blessing us with the apparel uh, this week. You know what I mean? I had to go get that pink thing. Do it right. Do it right for Harlem, baby. That's a fact. <clears throat> you know, the weather's been great up here. It's been switching lanes and all that. So, you know, I got my hot chocolate and all that. But let's dive into this album, B. You know, the seventh studio album from your boy Cameron. Harlem's own, Flea himself, King Jaffe, <laughs> brought us another great body of work, man. Purple Haze 2, which was brought to us 15 years to the anniversary of Purple Haze 1. I was ready. You know, a lot of us that are fans of Cameron, fans of Dipset, we've been waiting for a project from Killer Cam for a minute. Um... You know, Flea gave us a, some gave us the program about a year ago, um, maybe two years ago, um, which the program was fly, was fire, but we've been waiting for a complete album. Um, and he, he brought it to us this last December. Uh, he released Purple Haze 2. 16 joints on it. You know, that's that's solid for today. 2020, 2019, 2020, 16 records on the album. I think that's good enough. You know, we've seen artists go as low as seven, as high as 28, 29. And if if my memory serves me correct, the first Purple Haze album had 24 joints on it. He was killing us with, you know what I mean? With classic joints on there, like Get Em Girl, uh, Down and Out with Kanye. You know what I'm saying? Leave me alone. Let me just live my life. You know what I'm saying? He had classic joints out of them 24. And I think for that time, you had to like give that much work, right? Where now you don't have to give as much work. You just got to give quality joints. And we're going to go through the track listing. Um, but for the 16 joints he got on there, I think it's a, it's a complete body of work speaking to the times right now, speaking to some old situations, 
But um, he was definitely in tune, in tune with what the fans wanted to hear, what um, I guess what he wanted to share. He was very focused. Um, so let's dive into it. Who was on the project? Have y'all heard it? Let me get a thumbs up, comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, but did y'all hear? Did y'all hear who's on the album? Let's go through it. We got Wale on the album. You know, I was very surprised. I was very surprised to hear Wale on the album. You never know where Flea gonna go with it. You know, Flea go left and it's just fly. So Wale was uh, definitely a great treat um, on the album. Um, another great treat definitely surprised me. Um, probably a lot of fans out there surprised them as well um, to see Max B on two records. On two records, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect it. You know, even though prior to the album coming out, he did release some videos and some songs, so we did see it coming or we heard it. Um, but I didn't know. I was surprised, you know. And he wound up on two records at that. That was great to hear, Max B. Still the the waviest guy ever. He's the wave god himself. Wavy baby, you know what I'm saying? Bigger vels, you know, you know the 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 accolades keep coming, the names keep, you know, that's that's Mr. Bigger Vel. Um, you know, so having Max B is always a pleasure, always welcome, always necessary, um, especially for Harlem. Harlem, we needed that. We needed that. We needed to hear sound again. Um, so just to have, you know. The icon, you know, the god, <laughs> um, killer, killer cam on there, um, with Max B. <sighs> yeah, that was classic. Um, but we're gonna go into that that record. Jim Jones, yo, Jim is Jim is killing everything moving, man. He's sniping everything moving. Yo, I did I, I would have never thought he would be the shining star from the set like you know if we was talking in the early 2000s mid 2000s everybody was you know everybody loved cam like his wittiness and the way he put things together it's always been timeless you know um but a lot of people especially from my generation yo we were saying l's was the you know jewels was that guy man like the wittiness the, he had the you know the, the fashion and everything, like, Els had it all together, and he showed mad love to everybody, you know what I mean? So, free Jewels. But Jim Jones just came up out of nowhere, just start sniping everything, moving in the music industry, and he definitely displayed that on this album as well. Um, Shooter, if people are not familiar with Shooter, great lyricist. Can't even say he's new, up and coming because he's been in the game for a minute, sniping everything too. I think that that might have contributed to uh, Jim Jones elevating his boss because should have been over there just straight executing prolifically. You know what I mean? Um, and also shout out to Mimi that's on the album. Um, you know she brings that 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 soulful '90s feeling. You know. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Um, but let's get into these tracks, man. Toast to me, number one. How did you feel about that? You know, for and you know, in my reviews, I I, I go in on everybody's uh, intro because an intro is crucial. It's crucial to hip hop. How do you start this off? You know what I mean? And he started off with a toast to me. <laughs> Harlem shit, man. That's Harlem. That's Harlem all day. You know, toast to me, man. You know, I, I super salute that record. Uh, great opening to the album. You know, classic, classic him. Wow. And he's just explaining, you know, for me, he's explaining, you know, the vibe. From the gold teeth, the look, you know what I mean? Everything that's going on, why he should be saluted, why you should salute yourself. Um, you know, and it, I take it as a toast to the hustlers, to the misfits, to the to the 
to the go-getters, to the ladies out there making a way for themselves out of no way. You know what I mean? That's what I feel like that's who Kim speaks to, and that's who he was toasting to on the opening of that record. Um, yeah. So I definitely dig the opener. I think it's a strong intro. Um, you know what I'm saying? We surrounded by grave graveyards and murals, man. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a fact. Um, so all the hustlers rejoice. That's all I say. It's a great, great intro. Um, great opener to the album, to the project. Going from there, and he just it just opened up. You know what I mean? When you start getting that shoulder work, <laughs> you feel me? Um, but yeah, uh uh that Medellin. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know what that Medellin, start doing your Googles. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and figure out what that is. <laughs> you know, we get to steam in the party, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, classic lines on there, man. Classic lines off the rip out the gate. You know what I'm saying? What? Oh, oh I gotta, I gotta pull it up. For YouTube, I cannot play the music, um, but once we expand, hopefully Spotify, um, any network that want to have me, please, because I want to play it, so I got it in my headphones over here, um, but this is a classic line he started off with, off rip, like, he came straight with it. <laughs> Nigga said, bring your lungs. I get the steaming with the mollies. <laughs> bring the guns. I get the steaming in the party. Stop it. Hold up. Right there off the off the rip. That 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 made me that made me go and uh look up who is what is Medellin? Where is Medellin? And I learned that's in Colombia. I didn't know. I'm one of them, I'm not that guy that be like, yo, I I know. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't know, uh, what that was. So I got to Googling, looking that up. Another classic line off the rip. He said, I was going to take my ex back. Seen a with safari. Yo, come on. You know, that was a shot at, you know, Juju, what was going on. Um, you know. Letting people know about his love life like and, and stuff like that. So I, I super salute Cam for that because through all his body of work, you always see that. Where he's speaking about things in real time, um, real situations. And for me as a fan, I'm starting to identify like Killer Cam is like really the new Slick Rick. He's the Slick Rick from our era. But all of these stories are actually facts. You know what I mean? Where I'm not really sure if Slick Rick stories were, you know what I'm saying, facts back then, even though he was a great, awesome uh, lyricist and storyteller. Like, you got the moral to the story um, from listening to Slick Rick spit it. But with Cam, you get the moral of the story and you actually get the real story. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I think we started to see that from earlier work, but definitely start to really uh, shine the light on that on the program. You know what I mean? <laughs> and everybody that's in tune with the program, you know why I'm saying that. You know why I'm saying that. All right. Um, get back on point. Medellin, one of the hottest records on the album. I can't say it's the hottest, but it's one of the hottest records on the album. Um, I'm glad he put that, like, after the Toast to Me, come with the Metaheim, which is a fire record, um, and then go into Losing Weight 3. Now, I need you guys' help. On Losing Weight 3, right, I was able to locate the original Losing Weight, um, which stems from SDE. Now, this is a classic throwback joint. You know what I mean? So I went to Losing Weight, boom, and on SDE, this featured Prodigy. On here, he goes straight nuts. He goes by himself, Dolly. This is part three. If you guys could comment down below, what is Losing Weight part two? I'm pretty sure I can find it, right? 
with a Google. Let's try to Google it right now. But um, losing, why I explained losing weight three, classic, classic, because he, in a time where other artists are taking records from the 90s, um, going to get Aaliyah records, SWV, and Cam chooses to go and sample himself. <laughs> he sampled the beat and all that, and he just simplified it, really. Um, you know what I mean? So that was pretty cool um, that he was able to sample himself off of SDE, Sports, Drugs, and Entertainment, to the arena. You dig? Um, that was fire. That was fire. Super salute to him for that. Um, but I'm going to do a Google real fast just to see what is losing weight to. I, I didn't get a chance to look that up, and I'm going to get you guys' opinion on that. Um, what is losing weight to? What was it on? Call me up, 212-281-0370. Um, I know losing weight one was on SDE. Three is on Purple Haze 2. Let's look it up real quick. We're going to do a quick search. Um, Cameron losing weight. Three. Two. Two. Excuse me. Two. Um, let's get this answer real quick. Oh, let's go to it. It was on the Come Home With Me album. Oh, we're going straight to it, B. We're going to pull this up right now. Yo, Kim is so witty. I that totally slipped my, my mind. Come on. All right. So, yes, Losing Weight Part 2 is on the Come Home With Me album featuring Jewels. That's offending. Totally forgot about that record. Okay. And they, they switched it up a little bit on part two. It just it's just all coming back. You know what I mean? As soon as I heard it. Okay. So they did switch it up a little bit. We they added drums and in uh a beat over the original, where in part three he kind of really just simplified everything um, on losing weight. So first one featured Prodigy, second one featured um, Joel Santana, um, and this last one was just him by himself. Um, and and you know the piano was more pronounced. Uh, in this version of it, and I like it. It was more simplified, and I love to hear Cam on it like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And and his intro to every record was like, it, it touched your heartstrings. You know what I'm saying? I was only 14, just starting to dream. Like, come on, like for real? Like, <laughs> old grandma wanted was a washing machine. Like, come on. Like, and he's speaking to things like in real time, like these are issues that people are still facing today, right? When rappers are like, come ball with me, shine with me, um, spend this, smoke this, sniff this, pop this. He's like, yo, real rap, you just got out here starting a dream. You're realizing different things that's going on and you want to fix this problem. You want to be, a, you want to have an answer. You, you want to contribute to the, to the answer or to the solution of this problem. Um, and we do it by any means that's in our community. Um, so super salute, super salute to Cam for that because that was necessary. That was needed um, at all times. You know what I mean? Or this was needed in this time right now. Wow. Uh, let me just putting some stuff in the chizak. What's going on over here? Going on to the next joint. KOP. 
right? Fire, boom, bap, New York, top vibe, um, which was necessary. We needed that. Yo, get that apparel. Shout out to Duke the Guard as well. If y'all want to get that, get that apparel. That PH2 vibe. You know what I'm saying? Get that two in there. So it's definitely out here if y'all want to get the apparel. Um, KOP, fire, fire. I still have not found the record on here. We're like uh, one, two, three, four, four joints in, all fire, all fire. Um, also, you know, Kim still storytelling, um, showing how he got through, how he communicates, how he's, how he's getting it down. Um, free Bing, you know what I'm saying? Um, you already know we, we want him to come home soon. Um, but also from the music, you hear everything, you hear everything. Um, and he's a great storyteller. That's one of my joints. Um, I don't know. It's for the ladies. I don't know. It's for the ladies. I'm, I think it was a solid joint. Um, I think it was definitely a great joint to put Wale on. Um, to have Wale on that joint was a great, uh, great offset. You know what I'm saying? You know, when Cam started talking to the ladies and spitting his game, you know what I mean? All of, all of us listening, you know what I mean? Taking heed because he'd be spitting that magic, you heard? So super shout out to that record. Very strong record on the album. I think... Really, it was that record that got everything cohesive on the project. It just married the beginning half to the to the middle portion, or really the first half to the second half. Um, big deal. I think that's classic Cameron, or, or I should say classic Diplomats, right? When you get that classic sample... Cause I am a big deal. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I wish I could play the music, but I'm hearing the music. Y'all, yo, if you're playing the album as you listen to this, uh, I'm just going down the track list and it's fire. It's fire. Uh, big deal. One of my favorite records on there, just cause I could just bump that and like, I'm in the early 2000s, but I have new stories. Like these are new testimonies of, it could have been old stories, but it's things that haven't been told. You know what I mean? So I definitely feel this because um, I am a big deal. <laughs> Yo. Nah. And I, yo, super salute because, yo, he keep his ancestors and what I call ancestors or people he lost, he keep them Keep them, uh, their name alive. Keep them on the screen from Big L to definitely HUD 6, God bless the dead, um, to all of them, to Bloodshed. He super shouted them out. Um, and I think he's an example to the youth. Um, no matter what happens, yo, the way you come up and the people that help you, you should always salute them. Like, always give them the credit. They're, it's not like you you give them credit one time and you never say anything else again. You always have to bring their name up, shout them out, big them up, you know, pay homage to those that came before you, those that lent a helping hand, um, all of those things, you know? So this al album is a testament as well to not only where he came from, um, not only where he came from, but those who helped him, whether it's bloodshed that you know that was his influence to even rap, um, to from HUD, HUD six, who was just always there as a good friend support system, to Big L, who was also um our influence on his uh, his um you know, his development, you know what I mean, as an artist. Um, yo, that's, 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 uh, yo, that's super powerful, man. And I do the same thing 
all my big homies or my elders, as I call them, the ones that put me on to put me in the position to win, I always shout them out. And from Dishi, um, Bino, everybody, everybody that's an influence into super salute to you guys. Um, I think it's a pretty big deal. So shout out to that. Heat makers all over this album, I think, right? Because in 2020, we don't get the album cover, right? Back in the day, we used to get the album cover and we look through the credits and we can see who produced what, um, figure out who, who what's a person's real name. You can see the shout outs, you can get all that type of stuff. Right now, we, we're not able to do that, right? Um, so in the beginning of the record, you just hear, you know, Heat Makers. So I, Heat Makers did this joint. Um, so going into the next joint, um, Fast Lane, we know Heat Makers did it. We hear, we hear the drop in the beginning. Um, and we hear it on a few songs. Um, Heat Makers Fire, Fast Lane, Fast Lane Fire. Great story, great story. Yo, before we even, great storytelling by Ken. Like straight up and down, I felt like I was in LA. <laughs> I'm listening to the record, I felt like I was dead. Like, nigga stumble out the club, see show, he press you, nigga flick the knife, what up? <laughs> It was about to go there. Great storytelling into a story that no one knew. Like so, it was it was amazing. I, I love this record, Fast Lane. One of my favorites, also. So, um, you 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 hear a little bit of everything. The incident with Suge Knight, um. Another super salute to Duke the Guard. Um, if y'all know who Duke the Guard is, you've been under a rock, but he's the AR for Diplomat Records. Um, also, beat maker, configliary consultant, you know what I'm saying? The liaison himself. Um, but you also hear on this record how Cam and Duke the Guard used to take a couple things over to 560 State Street. Now, this is about one of three ref references to Jay-Z on this album, you know, um, or just not even reference to him, but to let the fans know, like, yo, we've been in cahoots, like, before this music, before all this, we've been known each other, um, where a lot of people uh, just didn't know that that um, Cam and Jay have been close knit since the nineties, like from the infamous battle that they say, you know, Jay-Z and Big L had, Kim was there. You know what I mean? So we start seeing these things and these testimonies where he's saying in this racket in fast lane, yo, me and Duke DeGar used to take them over the Hove house, take them things over the Hove house. And Jay already told y'all about 560 State Street, what that was. So if you follow hip hop, you're just seeing it's being woven together. The the quilt of hip hop is being sewn, baby. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, comment, like, subscribe, <laughs> share, baby. <laughs> it worked. And this is nothing but some good old hemp. You know, hemp and CBD, baby. It's all legal all over the world. Let's get it. All right. That's one of my favorites. And you're going to hear me say that. You can have more than one favorite. You can have multiple favorites, people. You know what I mean? Um, going to the next joint, the right one. Uh, let me make sure I keep this. Um, yep, the right one. How did y'all feel about that? How did y'all feel about the right one? Comment in there. Right one for me, I was like this. I was just bumping. I was just, you know, it gave me that. You got the right one, baby. Hey. <laughs> it gave me that, that, that Ray Charles feeling. 
that Ray Charles feeling when he in the Pepsi commercial and he like, you know what I'm saying? It gave me that feeling. I'm like, damn right, you got the right one, baby. Hey, 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 hey. That joint gave me a feeling like, and that's what the music today, not everything is not a party, but you want to get a feeling. You want to, you know what I'm saying? Something that gets you motivated, get you, get you bagging up quicker, get you sewing quicker, get you doing whatever you do and get that going at a higher level. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the goal. Um, so that did it for me. Um, yeah, you got the right one. The right one um, was definitely that Ray Charles feeling for me. What y'all think? Let me know down in the comments. Um, if you want to call in, the call number is 212-281-0370. Let me just open this back up because... This thing. All right. So you got the right one, baby. Um, so the right one, definitely a solid record. Um, that joint, you just bump down the West Side Highway and just, just vibe out. You know what I mean? Nothing too hard. Still got that piano in there. Could get that shoulder work going. Uh, and another reference to Jay-Z on that record. Uh, when he go into the one million, two million, three million more, you know, that's a classic Jay-Z reference, uh, classic Jay-Z uh, line, you know, and that's just showing the love, you know, when, when somebody takes a verse or takes a couple bars, it's just to pay homage, man. It's just to pay homage. It's not that they couldn't think of anything or they didn't know what to say. They know what to say. Um, it's their way of paying homage or saying thank you. Right, because we did see uh Cam and Jay Z come out um at the Hammer Sign. Was that no Webster Hall at Webster Hall? So that was a super classic. Um, what's my next one? Um, boom, boom, boom. We get into my geyser, the wave guy himself. Max Bigavel, all right. <laughs> you know, my city, he's been going for a little minute, and still his city, it's still his city. Both guys, both of them, you know what I'm saying? They, whenever they come out, everybody's ready to listen. Everybody's ready to listen. Please stay tuned, uh, to my next video. We will be doing the Max B album view. If you haven't listened to the Max B album, make sure you go and do that. Getting back to this, my city, classic, classic. The piano, you know, you know, I, I don't want to say in hip hop, uh, Dipset made that piano famous, but the piano that that was that right, and we hear that, I hear that. In the beginning of this record, where it's like that same my city, you know what I'm saying? And they dropped the piano. You know, Cam always loved that piano riff. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, we will have to interview him to see why. Um, or what is it about the piano that really intrigues him to go in and do his thing on really a mellow, um, on a mellow tone with it. Um, you don't see a lot of rappers do that. You know, some people need that, that boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? Or that hard knock um, in order to do their thing. But this is very smooth on my city. Um, also, storytelling. You know what I'm saying? From talking about how police is pressing them, trying to read rights, and you know what I mean? Uh, speak about the block work and how... They going back and forth. Um, it really gave you an insight to um, 140th um, in Harlem as a whole. Um, there's another record on here also that gives more of a structured uh, insight to what's going on on 140th uh, and Lennox. Um, but my city also, it's like a small glimpse into the whole city. Um, and he's still giving shout outs to 
everybody from Reggie White to a whole a whole lot of key people that come from uh, 140th. Um, so super shout out to Cam because I know Harlem is loving you for this album. Um, not just Harlem, but the whole entire globe. You see on social media is going crazy. The reposting of the album, um, and you and you seeing all these different products coming out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got the best, the best <laughs> in the city. That Killer Purple. You know that Dosi Do Runs Edition. Um, it's fire. It's a lot of power out here. <laughs> You know what I mean? Shout out to Dipset Couture. Dugger, what up, B? Um, yeah, it's a lot of power out here in the streets, and Cam is killing shit out here. You know what I mean? You can get all the apparel, and you got the killer on there. That's pony. You know what I'm saying? That's pony, doggy. Um, so getting back into it, in uh, my city, this is my city, and then... We hear Max B on Keep Rising, you know. Uh, which is great, which is great. I can't wait to wait till Max B hit the street, free Max B. As soon as he hit the street, I know it's gonna be movie time. Um uh keep rising is solid, it's solid. We're gonna move right on um to the get back. The get back. You know, the cookout vibe. You know, that's definitely going to be at the cook cookout. You know, one of the melodic joints. You know, we could two step, everybody could two step and be at the cookout. Like, ah, popping bottles. It's a solid record. Definitely a solid record. Um, just be honest. Just be honest, it's smooth. It's smooth. Very smooth. Very smooth because you know it's smooth because you 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 can pull some things from it. You know, um that's where you get CCC, BBB, PPP, DDD, I believe. Facts. Facts, but I think it was a smooth record. It was definitely a smooth record. Um, the singer also Mimi, shout out to Mimi. Um, she, she gave me that nineties, that nineties vibe, and sometimes we need that. We need that, you know. Where it's not the best vocalist, um, but you know, it works. You know what I'm saying? Um. I do want to break down these acronyms because it is fly. It's fly. And when you can pull from an album like this, um, you should. As the youth listening to this work, these, this music, you should be able to pull something from it, extract something from it, and apply it You know, in a smooth way. Not to just emulate, but you can learn from, right? Um because music is an art form, right? And as it being an art form, it's <clears throat> it it reflects life, um, as well as implement things into life, right? So it, it's it's a two way street. Um, so the CCC, Cool Calm and Collective, gotta be that. BBB, <laughs> bitch blowjob and breakfast. PPP, plush pussy and plush pussy is my preference. GGG, gangster gully, no guessing. DDD, don't dive in deception. Fire, fire. Let's do that again. No, nah, no, nah, we gotta do that again. We gotta be smoother with that. CCC, cool, calm, and collective. BBB, bitch, blowjob, and breakfast. PPP, plush pussy is my preference. GGG. Gangsta Gully, no guessing. DDD, don't dive in deception. You know what I mean? Those are core cool things that anybody can take in. Like, don't dive in deception. Come on. Like, 
cool, calm, and collective. But like a lot of people like to just react. Like something happens, and and we're gonna dive right back into the album. This is this is what's taking place on. Just be honest, fam. Just be honest, fam. You know what I mean? Um, people would like to react and wanna make you feel some kind of way. My man, I stay cool, calm, and collective. Man. You know what I'm saying? That's just something I already implemented in myself. You know what I mean? Um, bitch, blowjob and breakfast? That's classic. Like, that is going to be a classic line going from 2019 on on in hip-hop. Like, um, and we've heard many clever rhymes uh, or clever sayings or metaphors uh, from Cameron in the past, and I think this is just going to add to the list of those bitch blowjob and breakfast uh, PPP plus pussy is my preference. I believe that's what he said. You know what I mean? If I'm wrong, please comment down below. Uh, Killer, you can always jump in the comments. Call me up 212-281-0370. Uh, GGG, Gangsta Gully, no guessing. Um, you know, take that for what it is, B. Um, DDD, don't dive in deception. That's another key one I think is going to be used in hip-hop going forward. Um, let's get through this so we don't make this shit two hours, right? Um, so let's just be honest. We're going straight into Ride the Wave. Party anthem. Party anthem. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be smooth. Hey, the ladies is going to be in the strip club doing what they do to it. Fellas going to be doing what we do to it, throwing that kid ass, throwing that whoppy. You know what I mean? Um, but it's still going to be a good vibe. That's, that's going to be a party anthem. I can see everybody too step into that. Those that hold up the wall, they're going to be over there holding them. You know what I mean? Everybody going to have a little bit of movement. I think that could have been, I think this would be a solid, solid single. Um, Ride the wave, um, and super salute, super salute to uh, Dugga. I was at the um, the video shoot of Ride the Wave. They had some sexy pieces in there. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that was that was a vibe that night. It was definitely a vibe that night, and we was definitely lighting up. Woo! That killer purple. Uh, so Ride the Wave, I think, is a solid joint. Two step in club anthem. Um, then we go in from Ride the Wave to the Killer Bounce. Yo, we got to get it right, doggy. Um, you know, he gave that LL Cool J vibe on that. What y'all think? Was that the, the way he was spitting on that? He had that LL Cool J vibe on it. I want to see a video for this. Right, and the video I want to see for this, I want it to be weird. Like, give me straight hipsters on this vibe. Like, on this video right here, like riding a bike up a wall type craziness. I want to see something the diplomat bird actually come to life. Like, I want to see the diplomat bird come off the shirt and just sit on the sit on the top of the building like a gargoyle. You know what I'm saying? This video has to be nuts, killer. Killer, are you killer? Can you hit me? killer? Can you hear me? This video has to be nuts. And what I'm talking about is killer bounce. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Don't get me to dancing, bitch. You know what I'm saying? But the killer bounce, I think, could be a strong single. I want to see a visual for this. Off of me, off of me, off of me, off of me, off of me. Hey, hey. Nah, that's always fire. That's fire. Yo, he already. Ready put out um like visuals to a lot of these records. I mean, he did about four, I think four or five visuals. Um, so I'm not even sure what is the single, what's not the single. Um, one for sure that we're about to get into is definitely a single. We seen the official video. Killer did his thing. Super salute on this. Believe in flee. Just turn it on. That's why I'm being quiet. I'm being quiet so you can just press play 
Listen to Believe and Flee real quick, and then let's talk about it. I'm smoking my hemp, B. You got to believe in something. <laughs> you got to believe in something. You can't be out here with no God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to believe in something. Why not believe in Flea? Um, the video was on point. Everything, the beat knocked. Shorty, once again, killed her. You know, she brought that vibe. You got to believe in something. You know what I mean? Don't give me the singing and dancing, big. Um... I think that was that's another anthem. Um, like the Dipset anthem, this is another anthem. Uh, you got to believe in something. Why not believe in Flea? Solid. Um, going on to the next joint. This was the record I was referring to um, back when I was we was talking about my city. Um, this gives a. Uh, this gives a direct insight to 140th, right? On how they used, how they move, how they used to move. This is what was happening um, back then um, on that block. Um, the legendary people that come from that block and the legendary stories, right? And how those legendary stories people put in their raps and rap about it and make a million dollars. Um, they can actually take that those stories and put it on the screen and make billions. Um, I believe it because I'm from Harlem and I hear the stories and I'm like, yo, wow, you know, and not knowing that Cam was in the middle of all of all of those major situations. He was there. Like a lot of people say, you know, they were there, but they weren't there. They just heard about it. Some people was just there, just not as a key player in it. You may have just been the little homie coming up or just the guy doing running some errands or whatever position you play. But when we have these uh, great stories and we hear about these people, no matter if it's Obama, right? A great story about Obama, who still who's his assistant and who's the people that's around him, right? And those people have stories. So I think um, straight Harlem, we can start to pull out these these people that can speak their own story. Um, but from this song, we know there is a major story to tell coming from 140th Street. My hemp is kicking in. Well, well. This 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 is a record I had to listen to like four or five times. Like the whole album I listened to maybe uh, 10 times already. Um, but what I meant is I had to listen to this record four or five times back to back. Like, hold up. Who, you had to back who not to rob? Marbury? What? That's crazy, fam. Like, who robbed Biggie? Like, like, like this, this isn't an album. This is a, a a history book, fam. Like this is this is a history audio book right here. Like who was taking work to like five sixty? Who robbed Biggie? Like yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm like this album is a classic. Off rip, um, straight Harlem was fire. Straight Harlem was fire. Um, I would say definitely dissect that rap genius. I'm gonna definitely be on there. Not that y'all got the exclusive, but y'all be knowing some stuff. Um, and the last record on there, um, oh, that was no straight Harlem. That being the last record on there, I think they closed it out very well with Jim Jones and Shooter. Jim came with like we like I spoke about 40 minutes ago, sniping everything. Jim came with it. Great verse on there. Speaking, speaking to people's hearts, speaking with saying what has to be said. And then Shooter came and just showed what the future could potentially be. 
that's that's what I that's where I took it. Like he came spitting, like yo, dipset, we're here. Like the spinners are here. We can come right back. Like he showed the future, like for real, between Cam showing doing what he do, the magic, the genius within him. Jim coming with his wittiness on point, on temple, in the loop, real time with it. And Shooter's just showing futurist future, a glimpse into the future. Like, this is the new sound of diplomats. Like, I, I was feeling that. Um, as a whole, I'm giving it <laughs> five mics, B. Five mics, classic, classic, classic body of work. Classic body of work, and I like everything that's happening around the music. Like he knew this was coming, so all the other products started rolling out. Right, we I've seen some toys where they have the pink i8. Um, I see the dolls and the in the shower curtains, the socks. Um, you know, he doesn't have any new sneakers out, but the sneakers are out. You can get the Flea ones, two, three. I believe it's a four. It's the Flea fours. Um, right, the Flea fours. Shout out to Dipset Couture. They got all types of types of apparel. Um, great quality joint. Um, and shout out to Duke the Guard. You can hit him up directly if you want the merch from for, from the album. You know me, I'll be on my black power. You know what I mean? If you want your black power chain, we can make that happen. Holla at me. Call me up 212-281-0370. Or you can reach out to me um, via any which way, man. You know what I'm saying? You can comment down below here. Email me at qvessel at gmail.com. Um, but all in all, I'm giving this a five mics in the five mics y'all know that come from the source man you know what i mean so i'm giving that joint five mics um also the only thing i would say i'm missing from this album compared to purple haze one is just one thing the thing that made purple haze one stick out to me at that time was the skits I wanted to hear the skits, man. You know what I mean? I was looking for the witty, the witty skits that Cam always come with. Um, but outside of that, the music is there, man. The music is there. Um, and the skits probably would have took it to like 24 joints. You know what I'm saying? But it was 16 solid records. That was amazing. That was amazing. Um, so definitely get in tune with that album. Stream it, download it. Let's boost his streams. This is a great album that should not go unnoticed. Hip hop, wake up. It's your boy Q Vessel. This is the Volti Mo <laughs> Vessel Multi Show. And stay tuned for the next album review. Love. How the hell do I end this stream, B?